Hello, everyone. Welcome to Gardner's Top of Mind. My name is Mary Vasalio, and today I want to talk to you about a life skill that you will need if you're doing anything Gen AI related or indeed exploring any new technology or trend that's out there. And that is being good at innovation. There's two things I want to talk to you about today. Two basic elemental skills that you have to nail if you're going to innovate in Gen AI or indeed anywhere. And those are how to do push and pull innovation and how to balance the how of innovation with the why. Anyone struggling with new technologies, Gen AI or otherwise, knows that innovation in a corporate world or in large public sector organizations is anything but easy. In fact, I sometimes think it's like there's some kind of innovation assassin going around and killing people's ideas inside large organizations so they can never see the light of day. And of course, with everything we're doing in Gen AI and all the speed of technology change, that has to change too. So I want to give you two basic skills that I think are really necessary and fundamental, kind of elemental skills for anyone out there trying to shake things up, do things a little bit differently, or indeed innovate. So let me start with the first one first. Push and pull innovation. When you're in front of any big new technology or trend, there are two options you can take for how to approach it. And they are called push innovation and pull innovation. Push innovation is technology led. It starts with the technology. Pull innovation is business led. It starts with the business problem or the business opportunity that you're focused on. With push innovation, if you were say exploring the possibilities of Gen AI, you would say, what can this technology or set of technologies do for us? What can we do with Gen AI? And push innovation is more subject to one of the one of the problems with it is that you can fall for the hype much more easily. Because when you ask a big open-ended question like, what can this technology do for us? Then a lot of technology service providers and other people will give you really long laundry lists of answers of all the things their solution can do for you. And so you can kind of get enamored of the technology and put it before the business problem. Pull innovation is business-led. So it starts with pulling out of the business. What are the problems or opportunities that this technology might help us solve or that any technology might help us solve. So pull innovation is very grounded in some kind of pragmatic need or pragmatic opportunity. And its biggest drawback is that you can miss the bigger picture. You can stay really incremental and you can miss something very fundamentally groundbreaking by just focusing on the, the needs you can see. So what I would advocate is a hybrid of both of those things. A uh, push innovation approach, technology led, what can this technology do for us? And a pull innovation approach to make sure that you are staying grounded in pragmatic problems you actually can solve. So with that countermeasure of the, hi the hybrid approach, I think you'll be much more well-placed to be pragmatic, but also to capture all the benefits of whatever new technology you're exploring, whether it's Gen AI or something else. That is basic elemental skill number one. Skill number two for anyone looking to innovate out there is focusing as much on the why as you do on the how, or even more on the why than you do on the how. So I'm going back now, maybe a decade ago, we did some research on master innovators. So master innovators, we define them as people who in their field created game-changing breakthrough results, maybe uh, not just once, but maybe a few times. And that's different from corporate innovation teams who are put together to try and figure out what they can do with new technologies or whatever, Gen AI teams or some parts of data and analytic teams, people who are in charge of doing some new stuff, creating some new value. Okay, so we were trying to look at what's different between the master innovators and corporate innovation efforts. And we found a lot of things that were really interesting. But one of them that we found was this. When we went out and interviewed corporate innovation teams and we asked them, how are you innovating? They would give us reams of detail, you know, 25 slide decks, eight point font, chevrons, process maps, governance structures, committees. It was all really, really well defined and really unambiguous and clear. But when we asked them, why are you innovating? They would normally say some version of, because we should be innovating, which isn't wrong. That's true. You should be innovating. But that's not a sufficient reason in and of itself for people to break out of their habitual quotidian day-to-day -day norms and do something new and different. 
You need some other reason. Now, contrast that with the master innovators. And when I say master innovators, I mean from really different fields. You know, we interviewed people who were at the top of their game in haute cuisine, uh, you know, best chef of the year kind of people. We interviewed um, someone who was trying to design the fastest single-handed yacht race, uh, yacht, yachting boat in the world, ocean-going sailing vessel. We interviewed someone who was a CEO of a construction company that was trying to solve how to remotely detonate landmines so that people wouldn't get hurt and bring back the economies where those landmines were, were, were placed in Cambodia back to economic self-sufficiency. So really wildly different um, domains. And we asked them the same question, how are you innovating? And they would look at us, all of them, no matter what their domain, they would look at us and go, I, I don't really know how we're going to innovate exactly because that's part of doing something new. We don't have it all planned out. We're just going to see how things go. They wouldn't, um, they wouldn't just tolerate ambiguity in the how, they would protect it. Like if I pre-plan every step, then I won't be innovative. I have to allow for things to emerge um, unexpectedly and for things to be unpredictable. But when we ask them, why are you innovating? They and everybody on their team could answer in 15 seconds or less. And the answer was never because we should be innovating. It was, I'm trying to create the fastest ocean going sailing vessel in the world. I'm trying to create the most amazing sensory culinary experience you've ever had. I'm trying to bring back uh, uh, Cambodians to happiness and self-sufficiency, right? It was these really compelling purpose statements that they were 1000% unambiguous about. So what does this mean for the rest of us? Well, I think it's just a reminder that what we really want is to have a balance between the how and the why. So as we're exploring new opportunities in Gen AI or some other technology or some other trend that you're out there innovating on, remember to be crystal clear about the why. This is something Gardner calls your AI ambition. Have a really good uh, idea why you're doing what you're doing. And don't be so concerned with having every single step mapped out of the how. Allow for some ambiguity and some emergence, so to speak. So two tactics for anyone out there innovating on Gen AI or anything else. A hybrid strategy of push and pull and creating as much clarity around the, the why as you do on the how or indeed more. Protecting some of the ambiguity around the how so that you can deal with unpredictable things that are likely to emerge. If you are interested in Gen AI and your AI ambition, you can check out Gartner's AI Opportunity Radar for more information and guidance. Thanks everyone for watching. See you next time.